Hello, and welcome to this overview on using D2L. Now, because I set my courses up the same way, I'm going to use my ETCV 631 class to demonstrate how D2L works. I'll start with the upper blue menu, which has the My Home button and the name of the course. If you were to click on My Home, it would take you back to the main D2L page that you came from to get to this course. This lists courses that you're currently enrolled in and also gives you access to the D2L help pages. If you're enrolled in multiple classes, you can also switch between classes by clicking on this little down arrow to select the course. Finally, I'm going to mention the little mail option here. I will ask you not to use that. Instead, please email me at cgj at arizona.edu. I'm going to come back to the red bar that walks you through the major components of the course and instead start by looking at the very first page you see when you enter the course. There are five modules in this first page, and you'll notice that any module that has a down arrow can be clicked on to collapse that module. So if you wanted to remove my menu or perhaps my Twitter feed, you can do that. I won't be offended if you collapse my Twitter feed. While the menu is closed, I'll point out the announcements module, where course announcements will appear throughout the semester, and the course calendar, which goes through October. All events can be seen by clicking on the right arrow next to the current date. That will open up the course calendar and anything in bold indicates a due date. I've also included the current University of Arizona time. Since Arizona does not go on daylight savings time and this can sometimes cause issues for students who are not located in Arizona. So here's my menu bar again. I have a button where as I mentioned in the first video I would like you to click to begin the course here and this will take you through the course information. These are just shortcuts to all of the components of the class that can also be found under the content link in the upper menu. You can return to this page at any time by clicking on the little home button. So let's look at content. The content page will display wherever you were in the course when you last left. I was looking at the overview, which has the course information I would like you to review. Now you'll notice that the overview and course information modules are the same. Also, if you click on the table of contents, it will look like the same information. However, if you scroll down, you'll see all of the pages, discussions, and assignment sections of the course. So this is a really good way to just scan through everything in the course. Throughout the course, you can bookmark pages, and you will see any bookmarks that you've made here. If you click on Course Schedule, you'll see what's coming up for the next week, I'm doing this before class starts so you won't see anything, or you could click on the full schedule and that will show you everything that's coming up. Returning to the menu on the left, I'll start with looking at a project and I'm going to look at the Google Apps for Education. The projects are all set up similarly. You'll find an introduction, you may find some supporting information, and there'll be a discussion forum where you can post questions. If there are any drop boxes or assignment boxes, as they're called in D2L, they'll appear here. To submit an assignment, click on the drop box and you'll have the option of uploading files. You can also record a video or an audio message to me. Returning to content, you'll notice that I come back to the project that I left. So the content button will always take you back to where you were in content. The class list will show you the members of the class. And for FERPA reasons, I'm not going to click on this because students outside of this class will see this video. Just know that you can go to the class list to find the emails of your colleagues in case you want to contact them to collaborate on any of the projects. The discussions link will take you to all of the discussions in the course. Now, each of the projects has a discussion associated with it, and that shows up on that project's page. But if you want to scan all of the discussions, you can come here. And this is a great way to keep up with everything that's going on, so you don't have to click into each of the projects to follow the discussions. Similarly, there's the assignments. The assignments are the drop boxes associated with the various projects. When they're graded, you'll see your score here and any feedback that I've included. At any time, you can look at your grades. Don't worry about the assessment details. You can click on it, but the message won't make any sense because I don't have any information in there currently. I'm still learning what this is. Before visiting the UA Tools link, I'm going to click on the Library Tools. I highly recommend that you visit this page as this section has been tailored for the EdTech program and the resources are all designed to give you easy access to articles on education and educational technology. 
you'll also find some useful tools that can be used to help you with your writing. Finally, there's a wonderful little box here to chat with a librarian in case you have any research questions. So here we are back at the home page and we'll look at the UA Tools button. The first button is our Adobe Connect meeting room. Clicking this button will launch the Adobe Connect room that I discussed in my first video. This is where you can join meetings or look at the recordings for meetings. There's an option under UA Tools for clickers. We don't use clickers in the classroom, so you could ignore that. Panopto is a way that you can record videos and you have access to VoiceThread. Now, if you've taken ETCD courses before, you've probably been exposed to VoiceThread and it is now integrated here into D2L. So if you want to do any of your assignments using VoiceThread and instead of, say, posting a text description, you're welcome to do that. We won't worry about Examity. We don't use that. This link will take you to your UA email, and this link will take you to the D2L help pages. Now, I highly recommend, if you have any problems, to click on the D2L help pages. You can click on Students, and this will have a number of materials that will help you with D2L. If at any point during the day, between, I believe, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Arizona time, you'd like to contact the D2L support team by phone, you can click here, and their phone number can be seen here. There's also a contact email that you can use to send an email or a problem report. So that's it for using D2L in my ETCD courses. If you have any questions or problems with D2L, please feel free to reach out to me via email or give me a call or text me. Thanks, and I think you're going to enjoy using D2L.